incredible. And um, I started looking for options to make my online classes more, um, let's say, interactive. And well, I have a story with gaming and, and you'll hear about it in a minute, okay? So first of all, I want to welcome you and thank you for being with us this morning. As um, uh, Jeanette mentioned, my name is Francesca Robles. I am a professor at Inter-American University of Puerto Rico, but I am also a coach, an instructional coach, I'm a mentor. So I have been in education in, in different areas. I've been an elementary school teacher, I've been a high school teacher, mentor, like I mentioned. Um, I've been all over uh, education uh, throughout my 20 years or so. Um, so I'm going to share with you different experiences that I've heard from other teachers plus some of my own experiences with technology and the whole process of distance education or remote learning, which is what is actually happening right now. Okay, so first of all, I want you all to think for a second um, about these premises and you will find an internet um, down here. You will find an address. I would like you to go there. Oops. I would like you to go to Fall Everywhere. So I'm going to stop sharing so I can um, copy the link because I would like you to tell me. I want you to take a minute and think and I, want, I would like you to tell me, to share your experiences with me, okay? So today we're going to be doing a lot of talking, a lot of sharing. I want you to tell me how you're feeling, um, how your students are feeling with everything that's going on, okay? So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to go to the chat. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Laredo, thank you, thank you. So what I'm going to be doing right now is that I'm going to share my screen with uh, the actual poll. And because I want you to see it. This is my first gift to you. Why gift? Because we want to start by including interactive activities into our teaching, right? We want our students to start looking at that interaction and you will see the importance of interaction in a virtual setting. So right now, as you see, I have, I have five people completing the poll and we will be discussing the results in a second. Right now, these are the questions. I am an organized individual. Sports are a huge part of my life. My students love taking classes online. And finally, I have integrated some elements of gaming into my teaching. Oh, I love those answers. I love those answers because I would really like you to share with me your experience with that. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple of more minutes. And as you see, if you decide to include these um, activities, in your classroom at the beginning of your lesson, your students are going to be engaged. First five minutes, you're engaging your students. And that's what you want when you're not in a face-to-face -face setting, right? So as you see, the numbers are changing. I love this tool. So it is free while well, you keep on answering. It is a free, um, you can uh, create an account and it's free. The only detail here is that you can only have 40 answers, but um, you can work your way, your way around. If you have more than one group, you can create um, similar prompts and then maybe create an activity for each of your groups. So that way you won't have to really spend any money on these particular platforms, which I love like I said. Okay, so right now we have 22 people, two more are completing the poll. Okay, I'm going to wait for those two more people. Okay. 
him. So that's it. So I'm saying that most 55% of you believe that you are organized people. Okay, okay, so I have a half and half here. Sometimes we are. I think that with the pandemic, everybody decided that since we could not get out of our houses, we are keep make home improvements. I did that. <laughs> okay, so let's see the second one. Sports are a huge part of my life. Whoa, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd rather watch Netflix. <laughs> well, if we're talking about soccer, maybe, you know. I like those things. And basketball, I could do basketball. But I'm going to be honest. I want to watch Netflix too. But please don't say that. Let's look at this one. My students love taking classes online. Hmm. So we have a nice, we have 19% of you say definitely. I have 57% said sometimes. And I have 24% saying I don't think so. We will come back to that one, okay? And then um, I have integrated some elements of gaming into my teaching, definitely 10%. Sometimes 57% and I don't know how to. Okay, so right now I would like to ask you, if those of you who answered um, sometimes, I don't think so, and then those that answered definitely, because I would really like you to tell me um, your wonderful experiences with, with online teaching. So you can type your answer, you can turn on your mics, but I would really like to, to know, why do you feel that sometimes your students love taking classes online? Sometimes, why not every single time? So I'm going to open the, let me see if I can see the chat. Okay. Let me see. Um, okay, I don't see anybody yet. So if you want to answer using the chat or you can also turn on your mics. Doctor Q, can they turn on their, their mics? Uh, absolutely. You can answer that. Yes, they can. They should be able to turn on their mics and also turn on their video right now. You can also respond in the chat if you wish. And while we're waiting for some responses, I can kind of give my two cents. So I think it depends. <laughs> I think that for me, I have a very different experience to a lot of the people here who had to go online in March. Um, so I've always taught online. I have I had been teaching online for you know two years prior to um, us going fully online as a college. Um, so I think my students like online teaching in the sense that that's something that they chose. <laughs> that's something that they expected going in. Um, I know that they appreciate the flexibility. They appreciate the accessibility, being able to access me. Um, and I, for one, appreciate that they can kind of work at their own pace and then contact me when they need help. But it's probably going to be a much different experience to um, the people that we have in the chat. Kihana, do you want to address any of that? Or do we have anything in the chat going on? Uh, I'm mostly uh, fielding questions that I'm getting uh, about whether they're doing okay. the recording or not. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's all right. Um, oh, Pamela says that I know some students like the flexibility of being able to work online <laughs> on their own timetable. Um, did you want to speak to that, Francesca? <laughs> We also have the students here who says that uh, as a student, I 
personally love taking classes online, but I know some of my classmates would rather be in a classroom. Mm, that's really true. Uh, Andrea Vega says, even though I'm not a fan of online school, I do admit that it's let me work on my own pace. Uh, in school, teachers sometimes can work fast, plus it lets me work on other things uh, with work, more time, etc. Uh, and Robin Denise says that they like being able to work uh, on the coursework mm -hmm. anytime. And that is true for her classes where there are no set meeting times. So my guess would be that's kind of a synchronous. So there seems to be that trend where uh, kind of students prefer uh, online classes because of the freedom that it gives them. And I'm hearing from Francesca that her internet went out. Uh, I'm going to mute myself mm -hmm. and see if I can kind of work her through it. So we're having some technical difficulties, so please stand by while we do that. Um, Kiana, do you want to suss that out while I answer some of the questions from the chat? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have her on the phone right now, so I'm, I'm trying to guide her through it. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, so let me go back. So Pamela said, same to that. I know some students like the flexibility of being able to work online on their own timetable. I think especially now, uh, students really appreciate being able to um, kind of work on their own time and at their own pace. And that really, um, what that does is that allows different learners to learn in different ways. And that's something that I've really loved about online teaching is that um, I can create things in one format and then I can create that same thing in a different format. And what that allows is for a student with different, a student with different teaching styles um, to get that same information. So I can do a video, I can do a lecture, and I can do a podcast all on the same thing. And it kind of gives me that creative freedom to be able to cover a lot of different modes. So we have some other responses. Um, let's see. All right. Um, Andrea says, even though I'm not a fan of online school, <laughs> it has let me work at my own pace. Yeah, I think definitely as a I was a traditional teacher, a face-to-face -face teacher for such a long time. Um, you really do miss that kind of immediacy that you get um, whenever you uh, whenever you are in a room with a student and you see them have that light bulb moment, and that can kind of be hard to get in an online class because we're just kind of staring at a screen and uh, we're not really interacting with the student in real time. I think it's still possible to have those experiences, those light bulb moments, and my students definitely have those um, online, but it's, it's, a, it's a bit trickier and it's more of a challenge to keep students engaged. Um, yeah, I, I hear you, Robin, for the classes having no meet times. I really love that. Hi, I'm back. I am Francesca's back. <laughs> That's all right. Let us handle the chat. You handle you handle your presentation. That's all good. Yeah, but I would love to hear what they said. When oh, no, I I'm me, and, uh, me and Kihano got you. Don't worry. Uh, right. Kihano was reading off of the responses while people were responding. So I can just get you up to date. So people were saying that um, even though they're not a fan of online school, they do appreciate the ability to work at their own pace. They like that there are no meeting times. Uh, they like that they can learn from their comfort zone. Um, as and, uh, Andrew said, as someone who took classes in fairness, I like being able to work in a group setting with my classmates. Um, Iana says the structure as far as classroom schedule, has, you can get thrown off very easily and it can be stressful and you can feel like there's nobody there um, really. Um, and it feels less interactive because I think a lot of teachers just kind of throw things up online and uh, they don't really interact with the students. The student just completes the assignment and that's it. Um, uh, Susan says that the class has to be really organized. Are, are you, as a, as a student, have to be really organized and motivated when you're in an online class because you don't have any scheduled meeting times? So that can contribute, like if you're naturally not very organized or not very motivated, like myself, <laughs> that could be a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so, and other people are saying that they love it because they are able to balance their work, their school, and some personal stuff, and they have the exactly. flexibility. Um, other people complain about the internet. 
not being consistent. I mean, like what just exactly happened. Like what just happened yeah. and what just happened to us last week or a week or two ago. It feels like last week, um, but in Texas, all the rolling blackouts, people didn't have consistent um, internet access. Um, Andrea you also know, in says, Puerto Rico, I know. It, it, after Maria, yes. the, uh, you know, Maria happened in 2017. So after Maria, technology has been a challenge, even in school. So it's been, it's been tough. And every time I say or I accept to talk at a conference, I always know that yeah. there's a bit of a possibility that I'm going to have trouble with them. Exactly. Um, and to kind of round out the, the comments, people talk about getting distracted online. Um, and there's really, I think a lot of people are frustrated at a lack of engagement. So do you want to speak to that in terms of gaming? Oh, most definitely. Now, I was going to ask about that last question where you said I have integrated some elemental gaming into my teaching. Mm -hmm. And I did see that 50% of people said sometimes. So I would really like to know how, how, uh, what have you integrated into your teaching? Um, did it work? or did it not work and um, you would like to know how to maybe tweak it for it to work so i would really like to know those who have already integrated some of the elements of gaming into their teaching um what have you done at least two people let me see if it is from my phone i can um yeah and, and while we're uh, waiting for people to respond, I'll, I'll share my experience. One semester when I was in grad school and I was trying to avoid writing my dissertation, I decided to gamify a class. It was a huge mistake <laughs> because the point, the point, it was bad. It was bad, but hey, you gotta fail to fail better. But it was a situation where I created like a, an intricate point system um, and it was kind of like Tetris. It was like you could earn any number of points in, from any number of like buckets, essentially, in order to get you know an A, B, C in the class. And it wasn't really clearly defined. I had not kind of connected it to student learning outcomes. And so I had a lot of students who were frustrated. And they actually, I had one that went so far as to go to my chair. Um, and it was it was horrible. It was embarrassing. It was terrible. Um, but I learned so much from it. <laughs> so uh, that, yeah, was my, that was my one, one of the things. Yeah, that was my yeah, one of the things. Yeah, and that's one of the things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and, and that yeah, happened a lot. A lot. And, 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 and we'll be we'll addressing that part of um, trying, trying to start integrating um, before we play, play right? right? So, so yes, yes, we are we are seeing structure screen because because um I'll be having a problem like with my internet, so we have access to the presentation. Um right now, right now we're moving on from the survey and uh, and um, we're on we're on learning outcomes. And, and at, the at the end of the day, yes, you yes, will, will, will we will be talking about uh, recognizing some of the factors of the, of the 21st century students, students which some of you, some of you are, right? right? And, uh, and we're, uh, we're going to define for some context today to online education, education and game-based instruction. But first, but first it's important, important to identify and understand the context of the 21st century, right? right? And, at, and the at the end, end what I really want to do, do, and hopefully I'll have, have, have my internet side, which I'm going to show you some strategies, some strategies some platforms, platforms that, that you, um, can you can start integrating into your lessons. Your lessons. As soon as, as tomorrow, tomorrow or, or Monday. Monday. Okay, so, okay, I so I eat sort of a, sort of a uh, uh, not a make not a make and take, but, but you know my you know my right? right? So so let's start, let's start with, with the future, future is now, 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 and that sounds like a cliche, right? right? But you know but what? You know what? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. honest. I thought that in the future, future we were going to have flying cars, cars and if I look, I look out the window, the window I, don't I don't see the weekend. weekend. However, However um, if, you if you look at the next, at the next slide, slide yes, yes, there are no, there are no flying cars, cars, but the but future, future is right, right now. We do, we do have, have uh, some, uh, technology, some technology right, right, that, that we were expecting to have in the future. In the future. So for instance, if you look at that image, you will see that video conferencing 
was something that was um, integrated in, in the Jetsons, right? And I remember watching that show when I was a kid. And also, your Apple Watch or your smartwatch was part of that, um, how can we call them? I don't know, they were visionaries, right? So we do have some technologies, not flying cars though, but we do have some technologies. And what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that technology is the way Seems like it. Let me contact her. Yeah, it, it seems like today is indeed technical difficulties day. So let me see if I can get Francesca on the sh direct chat and uh, see if I can uh, get her back on. And while we're waiting for that, I can address a couple of things in the chat. Um, so Andrea says, I've never integrated gaming unless Kahoot counts. I think Kahoot definitely counts because it's something that I use. Um, if you've never heard of Kahoot, Kahoot is a, um, it's kind of a, a game show style um, software that you can use. It's free to sign up and have an account. And <clears throat> I find it really helpful whenever I give lectures to have also a Kahoot running. Um, it really engages the students. There's music and animations, and you can have it running alongside a presentation in another tab and kind of switch between your presentation and the Kahoot. Um, and I find that there's just a lot of, there, it, it makes it much more engaging for students whenever they, you can ask them a question and it can be multiple choice, uh, it could be matching, anything like that, and then they can click on it um, and go ahead and give their response to it. Um, let's see. Catherine said, I did it years ago before everything was so technology driven and it was wonderful. So that is what I want to learn how to do again with technology. Um, Catherine, if you mind like expounding on that, you talked about how you integrated gaming without technology. I'm really interested as to how you did that in a physical classroom. I think that technology definitely can present um, an added issue essentially um so it, it's just another it's a it's another layer that you have to get to but i would love it if you would share how you actually integrate gaming in a face-to-face -face classroom okay um hi oh, here we go <laughs> no worries no worries okay francesca's back so i will see to her yes and i heard something about kahoot and we will be talking about kahoot and i will i most definitely would love to hear about your experiences with Kahoot because yes, Kahoot is one of the tools that um, are part of including gaming into your lessons without really feeling too uncomfortable with the technology. So I'm so happy that you were able to talk about um, Kahoot today. So now I would like you to tell me when you go outside um, and you as a student, what do you do? in your daily life, I mean, uh, positive and negative, what what do you do? What do you see students with um, when they're interacting? What are they doing? So tell me, what can you tell me about the 21st century student? And you have an image there. So it sort of tells you, right? iPads, yes, Andrea, iPad, tablets, iPhones, TikTok, uh-huh, what else? What else can we tell? Can we say about the 21st century student? As far as my kid is concerned, he's mostly playing on the switch whenever he has some downtime. They're always playing. They always have something. Memes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Memes. What else? Plays the way. Oh, I agree with you. <laughs> they're more distracted. Why do you think they're more distracted, Elio? We connect through the internet, definitely. Elidio, what do you think are more distracted? 
takes a lot to get their attention. Uh-huh, exactly. What else? TikTok all the way, Jen Alpha is obsessed with tablet games. <laughs> they don't even play outside. That's right. There is so much stimuli. Exactly. Exactly. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and move on to our next slide because I really want you to look at, uh, at what Clark and Avery stated, right? They said that the 21st century, and I want you to see if, if you see what you just told me, okay? Because I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading you. I'm reading you. Let's focus. Oh my God, Emilio, yes. They are less focused when it comes to things that are outside of interest. Thank you, baby Jesus. Exactly, exactly. And you will see why, okay? So right now, if we think about the 21st century uh, students, they were born with a cell phone. Like it's an attachment, right? Um, they talk in images, emojis, memes, and somebody mentioned it, right? They're entrepreneurs. We like to, uh, you know, upload videos and we like to watch, uh, a, how do you call these people uh, on Instagram? Entrepreneurs, yes. Um, we like to, huh? No, they have another influencers. name. Influencers. Influencers, that's the word. So everybody wants to be an influencer, right? And um, you have TikTok for that. And all of a sudden, anybody can be an influencer. And they like to think, our students like to think in 4D, 360, and HD, right? However, whenever we go to get a computer or a TV, don't we also think about HD and those cute little features? Of course we do. So you see how technology is starting to not only affect this generation, but adults too. So it, they also um, identify that the 21st century student prefer hands-on activities and interactive projects. And that's what you see when you're playing, right? When you're in that process of game-based instruction. You will see that interaction. Students like to communicate in short, bite-sized ideas, micro content. So if you think TikTok is, I think, a minute, right? And tell me, whenever you're, I don't know, browsing through Facebook, if you see a super long video, Sometimes you're into it, but most of the time you say, I'm not gonna watch that, that's too long. Or if you see that somebody posted like a super long status, you're not, I'm not gonna read all that. We do it. So imagine our students that are used to watching short videos. Okay, so think about yourselves when you're um, watching videos on Facebook, if they're short, you're most likely to watch those, right? So we are also preferring micro contents. Our students love to create. Somebody mentioned um, that their social circle is global. So that means that I can be here and have friends in Texas, in New York, in um, Rincón, Puerto Rico. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean that my social circle is here. And this is the part where I usually talk about my niece. We were celebrating her birthday in September. And you know, in September we were all indoors and all that. So I decided to rent an Airbnb and she was with me and with a friend. So we were only three people, but she decided that she was going to celebrate with her friends. Where? Well, she has an Animal Crossing account, you see? So what is that telling me? That our students, or you, if you're a student, where are you really interacting with your people within platforms like Animal Crossing? And what's up with Animal Crossing? It's giving these students the opportunity to communicate, to create, sometimes you don't have a space to be creative, like in your real life. So what do you do? You go into those platforms, right? Why? Because that's where you have the space to create, to collaborate, to interact with people that you love. 
with people that have the same interests as you. So if we look at the last bullet point, our students, even us, we want to win. We want to use strategies. We want to we want to to feel that rush that comes with a game, right? So if we see those characteristics in our students right now, why wouldn't we take those into consideration when we are designing our lessons, right? So I'm going to show you different ways of taking that into consideration when you're designing your lessons with your students. And I would like to show you these 21st century skills. There are more, but um, the partnership for the 21st century learning, they're a group of, uh, of organizations that they got together and they decided to uh, get together and see what type of skills our students, our people need to have to face future problems. What, skill, what skills can we provide our students, right? So there are different skills. I'm just showing you learning skills. So in this case, we need to provide students opportunity to what? Collaborate, to communicate, to develop that critical thinking and to be creative. And games do that, right? So that is one way that you can make gaming work in favor of that learning process. So as a 21st century educator, what do I have to do? First of all, you have to establish good relationships with your students. They need to know that you care. You need to be able to design those activities that promote collaboration. That's very important. Some of you mentioned that you felt that you were by yourselves. And that's a detail that nobody ever mentions about distance education. And I will tell you about two concepts that are important when we're talking about distance education, okay? Also, as an educator of the 21st century, you need to provide a quality learning environment. If you're not feeling that as a, as a student, or if you're not feeling that you are doing that as, a, as an educator, I invite you to think about it. How can I, as an educator, provide a quality learning environment? How can I design authentic experiences? And by authentic, I mean that they are pertinent. Everything that, are, that I am learning inside the classroom, I can take outside and solve a problem. That's what we want as educators. We want to prepare our students for the future. And if you see here, we have a quote by Marzano. I don't know if you know him. He's a wonderful educator and he has a lot of books. If you haven't had a chance, I encourage you to um, Google him. He's a great, great educator. And he states that for our students' performance, if we want our students' performance to improve, what do we have to provide? Opportunities for active learning, real world context, higher level uh, thinking skills, et cetera. So if we go back to the previous slide, you'll see that everything, the, the other one. <laughs> yes, thank you. Everything is related to these learning skills. That's what we want. Okay, let me uh, look at the chat really quickly. That is one thing that I miss. I've never seen one of my teacher's face. I why do you mm. <laughs> someone is not I don't like watching long videos even as someone who is older i don't like watching long videos or reading low long posts definitely if it's more than two minutes i'm out you see let me see um okay so you know um i see that iana is mentioning yes yes you can leave it there a Q. No, no, no. Go, go for it. Yes. Um, I see that somebody mentioned that you have never seen one of my teacher's face of, or heard her voice. And remember that I was telling you that there were important concepts that um, I haven't really heard in any conference or workshop, and it breaks my heart. One of them is presence you have to establish presence in an online course. And that includes that you need your students to know you, know your face, and they should hear your voice. 
So I am so sorry, Emma, that you had that experience. So I would like to ask you right now, which issues have you been, um, have been a challenge for you since that transition to remote learning? So let me, I'm gonna, I'm paying attention to the chat. I definitely prefer human interaction, yes. But there can be human interaction in virtual environments. The thing is that since it was all too, it was like putting off fires. The way the world started implementing remote learning, which is not the same thing as distance education, made it feel like it was horrible and you don't feel that interaction. So um, let me see the chat. Okay, who would like to share with me? Tell me an issue that has been a challenge for you since you transitioned. For me, I used to take dance lessons. Uh, yes, being part of a team. We didn't implement distance learning. We started doing emergency funding. Exactly, exactly. And what's the difference of um, doing that whole distance education, distance learning versus emergency pandemic. For many of my faculty, it has been doing asynchronous instead of safe. Exactly. And why do you think that people are really deciding for asynchronous instead of synchronous? Because they don't see that interaction. We're not hooking those students at the beginning, right? Um, it has required a lot of reading while in person, the teacher would either read, summarize, and give out the lesson with PowerPoint, for example. Now I have been finding myself with so many chapters is something to get used to, especially since I am a very distracted person. Andrea, Andrea, I get you. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was 40. So I absolutely understand what you're saying. And um, yes. I work in IT for the college, and so it's been quite a shift working to get in the system. I'm a hands-on learner, especially for lab activities for science. Okay. Many teachers do provide video lectures, available meetings, but not all. Okay. And my first motivation went down when I didn't have a lot of interaction. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that exactly. Exactly. The school system has put too much focus on the grade instead of the learning. Exactly. So I'm going to tell you important concepts that if you are an educator, please know that is very important that you establish presence. How do I do that? When you first start, you can either record yourselves giving your students a welcome, uh, maybe create a welcome video, or you can add your picture and then record your voice when you're doing your PowerPoints, which I see some professors are doing, okay? But it is very important that students know that they are interacting with somebody more than just the technology or the content. Um, let's look at the next slide. So you see, this is the other concept that most people don't really talk about, and it is very important. So I mentioned established presence, but also students need to have the opportunity to interact with another student, with the content, and with the instructor. And I did not include with the technologies also. So if you are not developing activities that provide that interaction, then it's time to start analyzing your planning, okay? Because interaction and establishing presence are two of the most important elements in distance education. And those two things, happen when you integrate elements of gaming. Okay, so next. So if you see Vygotsky 
I mean, we're talking 1978 and he's still relevant. Social interaction is fundamental in the process of learning. And I'm telling you 1978, and we keep seeing research validating the importance of social interaction. Exactly. Next slide, please. The students need to see that you are human, definitely. So if you are an educator, what's the process? What do you have to do? The first thing you have to do is, go ahead. Think about what you're saying. Education as we know it needs to be transformed. We still have, an, sadly, an obsolete system that is still thinking or preparing people for that um, industrialized era. And right now we need to move away from that because now we're entering a technological era. So what does that mean that from now on, the future is where? It's going to be, be based on ICTs, those new technologies, even technologies that we don't know exist, maybe, we will be using technologies in five years that don't exist right now, right? So we have to use that technology to help us keep our students engaged. Our students are technological students. Our students are not going to come to where we are right now. The students from 2021 are not the same students from 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Right now, we have to take into consideration the differences, the generational differences, okay? So how do I do that? I take into consideration the technology. First, I have to consider what are my goals? What do I have to, um, what do I have to do? What, what, what do I want to obtain? What do I want my students to obtain, okay? Afterwards, after you already figure out your goals, then how am I going to assess the learning? How am I doing that? How can I integrate technology in this process? And then what do I have to think about? I have to think about the learning process, the strategies that I'm going to be using. Maybe you can plug in some gaming elements in there during that learning process, right? And then at the end, you're going to be choosing um, your learning resources. Those that you know that will work for you and for your students. Because we're integrating games doesn't mean that our lessons are not going to be rigorous. And by rigorous, I don't mean that they're going to be static and horrible. No, rigorous mean that you're going to push thinking to the upper levels. And I want you to think about Bloom. You want students to create, okay? Go back to those 21st century skills. They are part of that rigorous, um, back please, <laughs> of that uh, planning of rigorous lessons. And if you see the first point, it says what? Pertinent, relevant. It needs to be interesting for the students. If students are playing Among Us, we need to know about Among Us. If students are playing, um, what's the name of the imposter? <laughs> That's Among Us. If your students are playing Animal Crossing, then Animal Crossing it is. You have to know, you have to stay relevant to what your students are um, playing out there. So you can integrate that into your classroom. Go ahead. Exactly, ways to relate. So right now, I want to show you, go ahead, Q. So um, if you're interested, <laughs> if you're interested of learning more about uh, distance education, you have Henry, you have Birch, you have Moore. They are the masters in everything that's related to distance education. So I encourage you, if you want to know more about them, go ahead. You will find books and articles that are amazing. Okay, so here you have 
this image. This is how I started in the gaming world with Pac-Man. Um, as an instructor, how do you go from knowing about Among Us and Animal Crossing to using those games to encourage critical thinking? I will tell you in a second, Tracy. Can you go back, um, Q? So I started with Pac-Man. Um, how did you start playing? Do you, do you feel that you're a gamer? Who feels like they're a gamer? Do you feel that you're a gamer? Yes. So I see no. I see somebody said yes. Others no. I am not. I am not on the worst. <laughs> yes, no. Yes. Okay. I'm G said not at all. I'm a gamer for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, Q, can we move on? <laughs> Let's see if you are or not a gamer. Look at that <laughs> cartoon. Tell me if you are or are not a gamer. Do you know what Farm Bill is? <laughs> Do, <laughs> you see? <laughs> so we are really gamers. I mean, maybe we're not talking big games, but we are gamers, you see? <laughs> Go ahead, Q. <laughs> So um, Vincent in 2018 said that a game is playful, but then look at that word, that magic word, interactive, goal and rule-based system with an established set of mechanics and integrated feedback metric, in which place word towards solving problems and completing challenges. And as you see, I just mentioned, those, those four C's, 21st century skills, right? I remember that mafia game. <laughs> I think uh, Dr. Q might remember that one. Go ahead, Q. <laughs> okay, so why should we integrate games or elements of gaming into our classroom? Because they promote all of that. They promote collaboration, leadership, self-expression, loyalty, creativity. Are you seeing those four C's that we talked about at the beginning? The four C's that we want to develop in our students because we want to prepare them for the future? Yes. Can you go on, please? Okay, so we have different types of video games here. You have role play, you have, uh, for example, Dungeons and Dragons, you have Farmville, we talked about Farmville, and Candy Crush. So yes, guys, you are most definitely gamers. You have uh, Grand Theft Auto, you have SimCity, you have Flight Simulators. My brothers used to play that one with me. They were awful. That's what happens when you're the youngest. Go ahead, Q. Okay, so there are um, important elements that games provide that for you to implement game-based learning into your classroom, you need to consider. And if you see these, aren't you already doing this in your classroom? You're establishing rules, right? So a game will provide the rules. A game will give you goals. But what type of goals? Challenges, because our brains get excited when we get a challenge, right? And if we're, we, we're getting challenged, but we're interact interacting with other people, can you imagine the whole learning process that's happening there? And what do games do? They provide immediate feedback. And we want to include that in our classes. Games also provide choices. Why wouldn't we provide choices in our classes, right? And why not, if you see mechanics, we're thinking about that learning environment and we're considering every single learning style that we might have in our classrooms. Go ahead. Okay, so as instructors, as educators, we need to design lessons that will provide opportunities if we want to start integrating game, uh, gaming elements into our lessons. They need to be uh, provide opportunities for students to explore, to achieve their goals, 
they need to feel that they're able to discover. Remember that challenge part? Interact, we need to provide feedback. So right now, go ahead. Right now I'm going to show you um, different, you see we were talking about Kahoot earlier, right? Um, I want you to see those uh, platforms and apps. And I know that somebody mentioned Kahoot and Kahoot is one of the easiest way of integrating gaming into your classroom. You might not feel like you're a gamer, but if you integrate Kahoot into one of your lessons, you're already doing something about it. Duolingo. Oh yes, Nearpod, I'm gonna tell you, Nearpod is my favorite. So um, Q, can you show us the next slide and then I'm going to start sharing my, um, my screen, yes. You see, there are some PowerPoint games and um, that are already created for you. And I'm gonna show you some of them, but so you know, the next session, um, I think her name is Stephanie. She's going to show you how to actually design the PowerPoint games. But if you're not there yet, I'm going to provide you with these links so you can use some uh, PowerPoints that are already created for you. And then you can maybe move away from it and start developing your own at your own pace. Never use a technology that you don't feel comfortable with, okay? Never, ever, ever. So right now I'm going to quickly show you. We have a couple of minutes. So I'm going to show you, I'm gonna start sharing my screen, Q. Um, thank you for your help with the technical difficulties. <sighs> And I appreciate all of you for your patience with all of these difficulties, right? Okay, so I need uh, to be able to share my screen cue. Just did it. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to show you a, because of the technical difficulties, I was gonna show you more, but I'm gonna show you one way to integrate. And I need you to tell me if you're able to see every time I move from one screen to the other. I'm going to show you Jamboard, which is, um, a product is a Google product, and somebody asked me, "How do I, if how do I integrate a, among us in one of our lessons?" So, uh, Jamboard is an interactive board, and I found this wonderful game that used Among Us. Okay, so as you see, my internet is a bit slow. So while that loads, I'm going to go to Nearpod. Why Nearpod? Nearpod is free, you just have to log in. Okay, let me see if Among Us is there. No, not yet. Okay. So if you are, um, this is a presentation that I did and I'm going to click on edit so you can see how it will look once you start editing. And I decided to show you uh, Nearpod because Nearpod integrates your lesson, but it also integrates elements uh, related to gaming. So if you don't know how to, this is one of the best platforms that you can use right now, okay? It's easy to use. You're going to use a PowerPoint. You're going to present a PowerPoint, right? If you're gonna do it anyway, upload it here. And what are you gonna be seeing? You're gonna be seeing all of your slides, right? And you see that it says open-end question, draw, collaborate, field trip, okay? so. You will see all of your slides. You will not see any of these. So how do I add those? You click here on add content and activities. So 
in terms of content, you can add a video, you can add a field trip, and then here you have that virtual reality component that your students are already experiencing in their games, in the platforms. So that's why I said you can start integrating elements of gaming. If they are already using VR, why not integrate it into your lesson, right? It's not that difficult. You're doing the PowerPoint anyway. So let's just integrate that. Yes, it's a little bit um, time consuming. It is, I'm not going to lie to you, but you will see how that interaction starts to occur. Student, student, student content, student teacher, and the technology. So if I go to activities, you see where it says time to climb, there you have a game, okay? You have a, a collaboration board where everybody can see what everybody's doing. They can even draw. And I'm gonna show you some of these, okay? You can also include a survey, a poll. You can also fill in the blank. So you're creating, intera you're integrating interactive activities into your already created PowerPoint, okay? So that's what we want. You even have a memory test. So you can integrate elements of gaming until you feel more comfortable, right? So Nearpod, if you want to start doing that, it's the best way. Something I want to tell you, if you click here, know that your content is going to be down at the bottom and you're going to have to move it all the way up, okay? So I'm going to show you how an open-ended question would um, look, so this is what your students would see. And then you as an instructor would see their answers and you can choose for the answers to be um, anonymous or if you want everybody to know everybody's answer. So that's, that's one. Yes. I want to show you the draw it because that includes movement movement within a learning environment a virtual learning environment so your students would um be able to draw it doesn't matter whatever you want them to draw i've had my college students draw <laughs> and they love it so it doesn't matter the level. They can click here, they can choose their colors, they can draw whatever they want, and then you'll be able to see it. The good thing about Nearpod is that, uh, because we're short in time, the good thing about Nearpod is that you can do it as a synchronous lesson, or you can choose to do it um, as, a, as an asynchronous activity where your students can take their own time, they can answer the questions, and um, then they submit their answers, and then you have all of that information there for you. Um, yes, I want to erase that drawing. Let me go for a second and see the chat. Hi. Um, I would love to have you as a student, Yana. <laughs> yes, oh, thank you, Q. Those are the PowerPoint games that you can go and explore. I used to use a, a Jeopardy game to practice with teachers here, well, with the students, for the state test. That would be the star, is it still star in Texas? In Puerto Rico, <laughs> Puerto Rico, here I come, Maria. <laughs> You're more than welcome to come. So uh, the equivalent for STAR in Puerto Rico is MetaPR. So I would use the pamphlets and I created a Jeopardy game for students to review the, for the test. So that's how you integrate gaming elements, baby steps. Okay, baby steps. Don't feel like you have to um, integrate everything today. You don't have to start 
integrating gaming elements on Monday unless you feel comfortable about it, okay? Because I want you to know that we, we see you. We see you, we see you students. We see you teachers, uh, educators. We see the difficulties that the way uh, remote, remote learning is occurring. And my objective today was to bring you some peace <laughs> with some of these tools so you can know and, and understand that yes, you can, you don't have to be super techie to integrate games into your lessons because we do want our students to be prepared for the future. So again, as a recap, remember, if you don't have enough interaction opportunities in your lessons, take that into consideration when you're planning. And if you're not establishing presence, remember that it's very important to establish that sense of community within your classroom. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> I wish I, I had more time to share more of these with you, but you know, technical difficulties. So do you have any questions, anything that you might want from me? If you need to contact me, if you have any questions, um, I might, uh, I can leave my email here. So you can contact me if you have any questions, if you wanna practice with one of these uh, platforms, I'm more than welcome. I mean, you're, you are more than welcome to contact me and I'll help you. Let me look at the chat. I, have no I do have one question. Yes. Uh, what subjects do you teach? I'm sorry? What subjects do you teach? I teach what English. Class? I teach English. I teach I teach technical writing. I teach uh, basic English. I teach uh, basic, intermediate, advanced English. I teach uh, when I coach. I coach teachers from other subjects too. So I also work with differentiation. And I work with other topics too as an educator. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Let me see more college teachers need to use nearby. Yes, I haven't used it since high school. Yes. Sometimes college professors forget. We, we tend to forget, but um, I'm trying to share the benefits of using nearby or that type of um, tool in the classroom because it doesn't matter that we're talking about college students. We all need that interaction in our classes. Um, this has been great, but another. Yes, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Yes, we do have another session. Like I said, um, yes, Stephanie, she's going to be showing you how to design your own PowerPoints. So I think that's a great opportunity, you know, as a segue. The PowerPoints that I just uh, shared with you are already created, but if you have the time, if you are that creative person, please go ahead and go and see what she already has and what she has to offer. Uh, technology development has been amazing. I heard some classes that use VR chat, which is also available on the image. Oh, thank you for sharing that. VR chat, that's amazing. I uh, no problem, Jessica. Thank you for staying, <laughs> for being here. Thank you, Jocelyn. Okay. Thank you, Elena and Christina. I'm so happy you enjoyed it. <laughs> So it looks like that's it. So like we said, um, please join us at 1030 for Stephanie's talk. It's going to be a really good progression from this talk. Um, Stephanie's going to show you how to make PowerPoint games, which is something I'd never thought of before. Also, please evaluate the session. I dropped the link into the chat, um, especially if you're a, a, a student who's uh, attending for extra credit. That's how we're going to determine your attendance for the day. So... Yeah, Maria, that's how you will go ahead and put your information in here and then we'll provide that to your instructor. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Francesca, thank you for talking. It was really inspiring. And above all, I felt like, um, 
you know, when, when you said you don't have to be high tech <laughs> to <laughs> integrate games into your curriculum, because I think that a lot of times we don't think that this kind of stuff is accessible. So I feel like this is going to be the first step for a lot of educators. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> of course. Oh, Yana says she's not seeing the link because I was sending it to the waiting room. Awesome. So <laughs> there it is. I sent it to everyone. Yes, it did. Okay, so everyone, and then we make sure we have the link for the next session. All right, there we go. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this for everyone, and I will see you all at 1030. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.